something that you people have written. We, I think we were discussing about the cofactors, isn't it? Okay, everyone switch on your video. Sabiha, switch on your video. Yes, so we were talking about the cofactors. Now we know that these are those molecules that are responsible for enhancing the activity of the enzyme. Now we know that a holoenzyme is made up of a protein part called as an epoenzyme. And it is also, it, like, it contains the cofactors along with it. Now, there are three cofactors, prosthetic group, coenzymes, and metal ions. Now, the first is prosthetic group. Now, these are, always remember, these are the organic compounds. And they bind to the epoenzyme very tightly. So their associated enzyme is very tightly and they are organic compounds. Talking about the coenzymes, so these are also organic compounds, but their association with the epoenzyme is not tight. It is, it is like not a very tight bonding, it's like a normal bonding that lasts for a very short period of time. It's Association along with the epoenzyme, it's not Ma'am, for a long lagging. period of time. Got it? Is it fine now? Hmm? Your screen is lagging. Sabiha, am I audible to you? Am I audible to you, Sabiha? Yes, ma'am, but the voice is yes. cracking a bit. Okay, okay. You switch on your video quickly. Now talking about the coenzymes. So these are the components that are responsible for uh, forming like sort of like a very uh, short period of time for an association with the epoenzyme. Now, the essential components of many coenzymes are vitamins, meaning one part of the coenzyme, or you can say one of the most important part of the coenzyme are certain vitamins. For example, there is a coenzyme called, called as NAD, NAD, that stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And then there is NADPH. Okay, so these are the ones that contain the vitamin niacin. Okay, these are present in these coenzymes. The coenzymes, they bind for like uh, tightly for a long period of time. So, a number of enzymes require metal ions for their activity. Okay, meaning you people know what metals are? Hmm? Everyone knows what metals are? Give me some examples other than the one I've written. Iron. So yes. Iron is there. So many there, right? You know all the elements and all the metals, non-metals and all of that. You know better than me. So talking about one such metal, like as I told you that metals are extremely, like they are important for better activity of the enzymes. And then there are some enzymes that cannot work without the metal ions, such as zinc is a cofactor for the proteolytic enzyme called as the carboxypeptidase. Meaning the carboxypeptidase will not work without zinc. It requires the zinc for proper functioning. Have you people, uh, uh, okay, you people know what chlorophyll is? Hmm? All of you know chlorophyll? Chlorophyll is the green pigment responsible for photosynthesis. Now the thing is that that particular chlorophyll molecule requires magnesium ions for their functioning. Magnesium. So without magnesium, it cannot work. So same way, there are many metal ions that act like a cofactor, meaning without them, the enzymatic activity will not go well. Okay, students, this much is clear. 
So up until now, we have discussed the different types of cofactors. And I think this is the end of the chapter. Right? There's nothing else. We have discussed all of the different bio micro, bio macro molecules. And uh, lastly, we have also discussed the enzymes. So this chapter is completed. Now tell me which chapter should we start after the students? Ma'am, can we do photosynthesis in higher plan? Photosynthesis. What about others? Yes, which chapter do you people want? Organ organization in animals. Organization in animals. Human physiology. Photosynthesis. Anyone else? Any more requests? Meaning if seven, like six of you, uh, six or five of you are in the class, I'll, I'll have five different chapters. How will I teach five different chapters? Now tell me students one thing. Uh, the uh, syllabus for your exam. Up until now, whatever chapters we have covered, are all of those coming in your exams? Yes, ma'am. Yes or no? Is there any other chapter that I have not taught and it is coming in the exam? No, yes. ma'am. I have photosynthesis coming in, but it's unit test. You have photosynthesis coming for your unit test? Yes, and biomolecules, but we have completed that. Yeah, biomolecules is done, thankfully. So we have photosynthesis. And when is your unit test? Ma'am, it's in second week of October, or the ending of first week. They have not given date. They have given portions. Okay, they've given the portions. Um, I have structural organization in animals for the half a year. Okay. So you have structural organization and Jobita, you also have a unit test on human physiology. The whole entire human physiology. I have two chapters. Which one? Body fluids and circulation. And, um, it's one more chapter. Breathing and breathing. Okay, breathing and exchange. Because, you know, I was in the mood of starting body fluids and circulation today with you all. I was like, it's very nice. It's a very interesting chapter. So, I'll start that today. But and since... Excretory. Uh, body fluids and excretory products. Both okay. chapters. And when is your test? October, like, 25th. October, 25th. Then when is your test? October 20th, bio exams of 20th. Okay. Hmm. I shouldn't have asked you people. Should have directly started on my own. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, see, uh, according to the dates of your examination, I can only judge by that. So, Abir has the closest, right? It starts from October. Right, October 1st or 2nd week. And yours is like a little later on. So I was thinking, let us first finish photosynthesis. Okay. Then we'll start with structural organization and Jyobita, then we'll do yours. Or maybe we'll uh, schedule uh, extra classes accordingly so as to complete the chapters. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah. First, you people note down this much. Then we'll start with photosynthesis. I was so in the mood of teaching you people body fluids today. What is the last thing you people have written? Okay, yes. Uh, yes, Zainab, I can explain. See, the cofactors, they are of three types. These, see, in general, cofactors are those components or those molecules that enhance the enzymatic activity. So, when we talk about the different types of cofactors, we have prosthetic group, coenzymes, and metal ions. Now, prosthetic groups are the organic compounds which tightly bound to the epoenzyme, meaning which tightly bound to the proteinaceous part. Talking about the coenzyme, these are the ones, they are also organic compounds, but they do not bound tightly. Their binding with the epoenzyme is for a very short period of time. And most of the time, the coenzymes, they have a component which is a vitamin. A vitamin forms a major or you can say an essential component of the coenzyme. Such as 
there is a coenzyme called as NAD that stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And then there is NADPH. People know NADPH, FADH, all of these. So they contain the vitamin niacin. Okay, they work with the vitamin association. Lastly, there is the metal ion that like metal ions are also required by some enzymes to perform their work, such as one example is zinc. Zinc is a cofactor or zinc is a metal ion which is very important for the functioning of the enzyme called as carboxypeptidase. Without this zinc, the carboxypeptidase will not work. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now you can note it down. Done, Everyone done? Yes, ma'am.
Dana. Done? Everyone's done? No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay.
Dan ma- Everyone's done? Yes. Also, this last paragraph, it says that the catalytic activity is lost when the cofactor is removed from the enzyme. So with this, we can actually tell that cofactors are not just anything. They are responsible for the proper functioning of the enzyme. And if they are absent, the enzyme will not function well and in turn will have, you can say, not perform any of the functions of our body. So that is why the cofactors are extremely important.
Ten students. Hmm. All of you are done. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we have completed the chapter that is biomolecules. Now we're going to start with the next chapter. Just let me load that for you. Okay, can you all see the screen? Yes. Okay, everyone, switch back your videos on. Let's start a new chapter. All right, now, uh, students, just look into the updated books and tell me which part of this chapter has been deleted, which part is there. Check and tell me. Even I'm checking, I don't have the updated book. Say a little clearer, please. The early experiments are there in the topics. Hmm? The topic named early experiments are there. Early experiments have been deleted. No, they are there. No, it's there, ma'am. Okay. And what about ma'am? Nothing is ma'am, nothing is deleted. Nothing is deleted, everything is there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So, talking about photosynthesis. So, in this, we are going to see, like, whatever you have studied about photosynthesis up until now, this is going to go very, very deep into the process to see all the technicalities, all the things that happen that are associated with the photosynthesis in the case of higher. Now talking about photosynthesis, so all of us know that is it is the process through which the green plants make their own food and the food of the plant is glucose, right? Now why only the green plant students? Why not any other color? Why not pink, blue, purple? Hmm? And green plants because they have chlorophyll present. And chlorophyll is present in which part of the cell? Did the rest of the students please switch on your videos? See, this is again a botany chapter. And if you people are going to be like this, even I will feel sleepy. So be attentive in the class, speak, talk, talk to me. So tell me. In which cell organelle is the chlorophyll present? This is from cell chapter. All of you have studied it. Chloroplast. Chloroplast. Now, talking about what are the raw materials of photosynthesis. So, we have light, carbon dioxide, water, and obviously the chlorophyll. And all of this happens in the presence of sunlight. Yes. Now, the glucose is the food of the plant. And glucose is an example of which kind of biomolecule? Carbohydrate. Carbohydrate, correct. 
moving forward now remember one thing this is a like sort of like this is a fact that you people should remember that potassium hydroxide that is koh this is a chemical that is responsible for absorption of co2 so if a vessel has co2 gas in it and if you want to remove that co2 gas from the vessel you will add koh and the co2 will be removed okay remember this now talking in terms of the early experiments so joseph priestley in the year 1770 he said that he discovered that carbon dioxide is extremely important for the functioning or you can say the process of photosynthesis when we talk about the process of photosynthesis so whenever a plant performs photosynthesis they add oxygen to the air this was what he discovered and he wanted to prove it so in the year 1774 joseph priestley discovered that plants replenish oxygen in the air which respiratory animals and burning candles eliminate so for this he did the bell jar experiment he took a plant, he took in one uh, bell jar under that he kept a mouse okay and under one bell jar he kept a burning candle and then in one he kept a plant so for the first one wherein he kept the mouse in it he saw that after a while the mouse died in the uh, candle experiment what he saw was that after a while the candle got extinguished meaning it got burned up and then in the plant now what he did he saw that okay the process did not continue for a long period of time then what he did he took a mint plant and he kept it in the bell jar that had a living mouse and that had a burning candle and he saw that now neither did the mice die nor did the candle got extinguished so he said that the plant was replacing something in the atmosphere that was being eliminated by those animals and the burning candle so he found out that the animals they excrete or you can say exhale out carbon dioxide now if it is in a closed vessel so the carbon dioxide that is released that is the only thing that will get uh, inhaled also so the mice died because of that and we know that for fire to burn oxygen is very important right so but whenever the candle is burning that also produces carbon dioxide carbon monoxide so because of that after a little while the car uh, the candle also got extinguished meaning it got what do you call when the candle does not burn any what do you call it unlit what do you call it like the candle lost its flame meaning getting extinguished distinguished extinguished you you fire extinguisher so the candle got extinguished because i am not getting the word that is opposite of lighting the flame and then what is the opposite of it not lighting the flame. means bujh jana right the candle got burnt out it got extinguished this much is clear the first person and his experiment is clear to you all joseph priestley yes, yes sir all right then came jan engine house and he said that sunlight is very important for plant process meaning without sunlight the plant cannot do their process or cannot do their function that they are supposed to so he also conducted an experiment on an aquatic plant and he observed that small air bubbles were formed around the green parts of the plant and these air bubbles were again of oxygen so if there is a plant in any area or in any vessel or in any system and oxygen bubbles are found surrounding it it means that the plant is photosynthesizing right it's doing the process of photosynthesis so he said that the plants would do the photosynthesis whenever there is sunlight with without sunlight it would not do any and this air bubbles they were found only in the part of the plants that were lit right they got sunlight and the parts that did not get the sunlight they did not show the air bubbles is it clear so the basic thing that jan ingenhouse did was that he said that the sunlight is essential to 
all the plant crossed. Then came Julius von Sachs. Now, I don't know what he discovered. Let me just check. I don't know. In 1854, he discovered and I left it blank. So, what did he discover? Okay. He said that whenever the plants photosynthesize, right? Whenever the plants do the process of photosynthesis, glucose is the end product. So, he discovered glucose as the end product. He discovered glucose as the end product of photosynthesis, meaning all those plants that will do the process of photosynthesis as the end product or the product of photosynthesis will be the glucose molecule. This is what he discovered. Then came T.W. Engelman. Now he said that, okay, one more thing. Uh, do you people know that the glucose, once it is formed in the plants, it gets stored in the form of? What is the form? Starch. 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 Yes, correct. Gets stored in the form of starch. Now in 1854, he discovered this very thing that glucose is product produced. And one more thing, he also said that the glucose is produced only and only by the green parts of the plant. So, it is the end product of photosynthesis by green parts of the plant. That is what he said. Then came T.W. Engelman and what he did, he took a green algae called as cladophora and he illuminated it, meaning using a prism, he made light split into spectral components and he found that the photosynthesis takes place in the blue and the red light area. It does not take place in any other area. So, this is a very, very important discovery in terms of, uh, you can say, photosynthesis. Now, when he illuminated the cladophora using the prism, he saw that the cladophora was making air bubbles only in the region of blue, right? blue uh, light and the red light. That's it. No other region it was making the oxygen bubbles or doing photosynthesis. So ultimately he concluded that blue and the red light area is where the action spectrum of photosynthesis is. Meaning it is the blue and red area of the spectrum where photosynthesis takes place. Is it clear students? All right. Now moving forward, this is sort of like the uh, sum total of the reaction of photosynthesis, sort of like in a very, con um, what do you say, a compact form. Carbon dioxide along with water in the presence of sunlight, in the presence of chlorophyll, CH2O, meaning this is the short version of the glucose molecule. No, apart from that, glucose is C6H12O6 plus oxygen, which is the byproduct of photosynthesis. Why is it a byproduct, students? Why is oxygen a byproduct? Not because it takes place. What it? It splits. It? The water molecule gets split. Mm -hmm, that's true. It comes from the water molecule splitting. But why is it called as a byproduct and not a product? Just like how glucose is a product of photosynthesis. But oxygen is a byproduct. That's what I'm asking. Hmm? The reason why it is called as a byproduct is because the plant does not utilize the oxygen that it releases. It only utilizes a certain part of it. The rest of the oxygen is released into the atmosphere and it is utilized by us animals for breathing purpose. Clear students? This much is clear? Yes ma'am. Okay. Then comes Cornelius Van Neel. Now he is the person that said that the oxygen which is coming as a byproduct of photosynthesis 
it is coming from the splitting of water molecule because earlier people used to think that o2 comes from co2 but no that's not the case he demonstrated that photosynthesis is a light dependent process meaning during the process of photosynthesis light is extremely important without the light the photosynthesis will not take place and he also said that oxygen is involved during the photosynthesis and it comes from and it comes from the splitting of water molecule meaning whenever the water molecule would split then only the oxygen will be released is it clear students now all in all this is the whole entire reaction of photosynthesis six molecules of carbon dioxide along with 12 molecules of water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll c6h12o6 is prepared along with six molecules of water and six molecules of oxygen clear now ruben kamen et al meaning ruben kamen and along with all of their colleagues they used radio isotopic techniques to find out that oxygen comes from splitting of light they also worked on the same thing that the oxygen which is coming as a by product it's coming from the splitting of light but they used radio isotopic techniques to find that out that is why it is separately their name is given clear students any doubts up until now No, now the question comes where does photosynthesis take place so it takes place in the green parts of the plant and you people know why because the green parts are the only parts of the plant that contain chlorophyll and that is how the process of photosynthesis will take place now all in all tell me one thing the chlorophyll molecule which is being talked about so many times what does it do why is it so important it absorbs sunlight hmm. it absorbs sunlight clear so now you people can note down till here then we we'll
Donne. Donne-moi. Donne-moi. Everyone's done? Yes.
Dan mam. Everyone's done. Yes. No, ma'am, just a minute.
Done, ma'am. Then, ma'am. One minute, ma'am. Everyone's done? No, ma'am. One minute. Okay, okay. Okay, take your time. It's all right.
Done, ma'am. Done, students. Done, ma'am. Done, ma'am.
Done, ma'am. Okay, any doubts up until now? No, ma'am. Everyone's done? Yes, ma'am. All right, so now let us see what happens further. So we now, while we were studying anatomy in flowering plants, we saw that the leaves, they have mesophyll cells and they have the uh, bundle sheet cells. Now talking about the mesophyll cells, they are of two types. What are the two types of mesophyll cells? Hmm? No one remembers? Palisade, parenchyma. Spongy parenchyma. So inside the leaves, there are mesophyll cells and inside the mesophyll cells, there are chloroplasts. And these chloroplasts, they contain the chlorophyll molecule. Now in the chloroplast, I think you people remember that there is a grana, stroma lamellae and stroma. Now the stack of thylakoid is called as grana and thylakoids are like little coin-like structures. Several grana, they are connected together or joined together by stroma lamellae. And the space that it encloses is known as the stroma. Just like how the cell has cytoplasm, the particular, you can say, the chloroplast would have the stroma. Now see, if I say that this is one thylakoid, so now the stack of the thylakoid, just like how you make a stack of coins, so a stack of thylakoid will be called as the grana. And the two granas, like you can uh, say, connected together a structure called as stroma lamellae. Now in the stroma part of the chloroplast, the formation of glucose takes place by enzymatic reaction. So if anyone would ask you, where does the glucose uh, gets made? So you'd say the stroma of the chloroplast. Now, talking about the two sets of reactions that take place during the process of photosynthesis. So, it is light reaction and dark reaction. Now, talking about the light reaction, it is also called as photochemical reaction. Why? Because they happen in the presence of light. They are light-driven reactions. So, the other name is photochemical reaction. Talking about the dark reaction. So, whenever the light reaction takes place, meaning photosynthesis has started and the uh, carbon dioxide has been utilized, then the dark reaction takes place, wherein the products of the photosynthesis, uh, or you can say the products of the light reaction, now they are utilized to make the food of the plant. The other word or the other name for the dark reaction is carbon reaction. So, the differences between dark and light reaction is clear to you all? Yes, ma'am. Any doubts? No. Now, many a time people think, that, people think that dark reaction means it happens in the dark or it happens without sunlight. No. No photosynthesis can ever take place without sunlight. It's just that the light reaction is directly using the light. Whereas the dark reaction is using the products that are made by the light reaction components. Now talking about the pigments that are used during the process of photosynthesis. So the first one, the main pigment, the main, the most important pigment for photosynthesis is chlorophyll A. Now see, chlorophyll is of many types. Chlorophyll A, B and C, if you remember from plant kingdom. So chlorophyll A is the main pigment of the plant. It is bright or blue-green in color. Then comes the chlorophyll B. Chlorophyll B is yellowish-green in color. Xanthophylls are yellow in color. Lastly, there is the carotenoids, which are yellow to yellowish-orange in color. And all of these are known as accessory pigments. They are not the main pigment for photosynthesis. But like how you people understand accessory, right? It is like things that help in the process of photosynthesis, but they are not the main helpers. Now the chlorophyll performs in the blue and the red regions of the light. 
and the chlorophyll A molecule is known as the chief pigment or the primary pigment or the main pigment of photosynthesis. It traps maximum of light energy, meaning the amount of light energy that is captured or taken by the chlorophyll A molecule is the highest compared to chlorophyll B, C and any other thing. Now the chlorophyll B, xanthophyll, carotenoids, the accessory pigments, they all are known as accessory pigments. It's because they absorb the light of different wavelengths and then sort of like gathers light from everywhere and transfer it to the chlorophyll A molecule. Apart from that, since these are accessory pigments, so their function is also to protect the chlorophyll A from photooxidation, meaning it does not let the chlorophyll A molecule get destroyed by the light. Is it clear, students? Yes, ma'am. The structure of chloroplast, where chlorophyll takes place, what is light and dark reaction, the pigments involved in photosynthesis, all of these things are clear? Yes, ma'am. What about yes, the others? Any doubts? No, ma'am. Okay, good. Done, ma'am. Okay, then. Yes, everyone's done.
Ma'am, can you please scroll down? Everyone's done? No, ma'am. Okay. So, Jabita, please wait. Let everyone write.
Dharma. Dharma. Everyone done? Yes. Yes, ma'am.
Done, ma'am. Ten students? Yes, ma'am. Ten students. Yes, ma'am. Any no. doubts up until now? No, ma'am. Okay, someone is still writing. Okay, no one is writing. All right. Now, uh, moving forward. Talking about the light reaction. Now see, the light reaction, like I told you, this is the reaction that will be directly driven by the light. So first thing that happens in this is the absorption of light by the chlorophyll molecule. Then what happens? The light energy that gets absorbed, it gets converted into chemical energy. And simultaneously, the splitting of the water molecule takes place. Then when the water molecule splits, the oxygen molecule is released. And at the end, the ATP, that is adenosine triphosphate, NADPH, both of them are chemical energy intermediates. So these are also formed. So all in all, if you see light reaction in a sum total way, so these things happen. Now, in the next class, we'll be talking about how there is a proper harvesting system and all of those things. But first, you people note down till here, did you understand everything that has been taught in the class today? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Now note down till here.